Hey everybody, this is Robot from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. The premier destination for all things Vespa here in North America. Check out our web shop, ScooterWest.com, whether you own a modern Vespa or a vintage Vespa. We probably got the part on the shelf here. Um, on to what we're doing today. We're gonna change out the fender. Uh, a lot of people think this might be an easy task. Uh, this is definitely a five wrench kind of more of a difficult task. Not as difficult as overhauling an engine where you need special tools, but it's very handy to have a lift or at minimum put the scooter up on a tabletop, you know, like a workbench. It may take a couple people to lift it up on a workbench, but you're gonna need to drop this whole entire steering column, the jump, the replacement of this fender. As you can see, the fork goes right through the center of this uh, fender. And whether you're changing a fender on this brand new Vespa GTS 300 that has no, you know, um, the ABS, we just change out the fender so we eliminate the reflectors uh, for the North American market just to give it the clean look. Or maybe you damage the fender or you even need to replace a fork on an old Vespa LX Primavera. It's all pretty much the same steps regardless of what modern Vespa you have. So I'll start out with all the supplies and tools you'll need to complete this job successfully. So first of all, you'll need a new fender. You could buy these fenders in both unpainted and painted. Uh, they're pretty much the same shape throughout the years. Uh, the original Vespa GT200 fender has been discontinued. The only difference is it does not have the holes in the front. So if you end up buying one of these new replacement fenders for a GT200, you'll probably need to buy the fender crest that mounts to these holes. Uh, typical reasons why you change the front fender. Um, you scratch it up because the scooter's run into something or fallen over, pretty common. Unfortunately, it's the front most part of the scooter. Much like a bumper on a car, it's the first thing that's gonna contact anything. Um, maybe you're looking for that super exclusive Euro look and you don't, do not want the reflectors and you're not satisfied with something like the reflector plugs, like on this fender. So if you buy a brand new fender, does not have the holes, it would be a nice, perfect clean fender. And we've done several builds at Vespa Motorsport where people have asked for a virgin fender without the holes, all shaved and clean looking. And that's what we're doing on the scooter today, a nice clean uh, new bike to change out the fender. Another reason why you may need to change a fender is maybe it's got a stress crack you know, at one of the mounting holes. I've seen many times where these fenders are just barely hanging on there. Uh, FY, you always have to drop the fork to change a fender successfully. I have seen people cut them down the back and stretch them over, pretty ugly. If you do need to remove the fender, you could carefully get to these bolts, you know, kind of through the horn cover and removing the tire. And you could take a little mini sawzall and cut this fender off if you need to get it out of the way. Uh, for instance, if you're on a road trip and heavily damaged your front fender and just need to get rid of it. So these fenders come in most of the original Vespa colors, they can be special ordered. Colors such as white or titanium, black, red, uh, midnight blue, which are the very common colors for Vespa GTS. We have those in stock at scooterwest.com, so just search our website. If you're looking for a specific color, just give us the VIN number, uh, either email us or call, call in to order. The fortunate thing, these fenders are pretty inexpensive considering they're factory painted. Um, to have a professional shop color match a pint of paint and paint this will probably cost more than what a painted fender cost, unless you're a paint shop yourself and can do it yourself. But Or painting the whole scooter would be a perfect uh, instance where uh, it may be worth just getting a bare fender. So beyond the fender, there's a couple other consumable parts you're gonna need. You're gonna need grease to grease up the fork bearings. If the fork bearings are in poor shape or you have a high mileage scooter, I'd highly recommend buying the upper and lower fork bearing kits uh, that replace all the parts of the fork bearing. You're gonna need DOT4 brake fluid. I recommend this Brembo, uh, unopened, high quality DOT4 brake fluid, oil brake dash Brembo. You can find this on our website, scooterwest.com. The grease is just part number of grease. Uh, you're gonna need a special tool the Titan, the fork bearings tool SN is this four prong tool. Um, the handlebar pinch bolt, I'd always recommend replacing this lock washer. 
part number on this is 012543, I think is the part number for that. You're going to need a pair of the brake banjo crutch washers, uh, 127927, need uh, two of them. You may even need four if you dismantle the bike a little further. Uh, you're going to need several uh, zip ties, just hope you have those in your uh, shop collection. At a minimum, you'll need two of them. Uh, on to the regular tools, recommend having a torque wrench handy. Uh, eight millimeter Allen, doesn't necessarily need to be on a socket like this. A diagonal cutters, small set of needle nose, a T25 and a T30 Torx driver, a small Phillips driver, a medium sized number two Phillips driver, and a large sized number three Phillips driver. It's, it's nice to have all the various sizes of Phillips uh, screwdrivers. Uh, nice to have the pry tools. Uh, we have these available on Scooter West. The whole set is very inexpensive. Uh, typical ratchet. Uh, this may not be an average tool that most home mechanics have, but if you're dealing with an ABS pump, they're very, very tight quarters. You'll need a 12 millimeter socket on a tight quarters, uh, quarter inch ratchet. It's got a very small head on it. You could probably do it with just a standard combination wrench, but a little bit, little bit more difficult. The mirrors and the, the nut that torques down the pinch bolt, 17 millimeters combination wrench, eight millimeter combo and adjustable wrench is always handy. So that pretty much covers all the tools. Let's get right into it. And first of all, I'll tell you, this isn't an easy beginner, do it yourself kind of job. It is very important that you have some means to support the scooter because you're gonna be removing the whole entire front fork out of the scooter. And the first steps is to get access to the components of the fork. In order to do that, you're gonna to need to dismantle this uh, handlebars here, the handlebar covers at minimum the front cover, but I'd recommend taking the front and the rear cover off, and then next, dismantle the whole entire glove box, remove it, and get it out of the way. And if you're wondering how to do that, just look at several of my other videos on uh, Vespa GTS bodywork. Whether you have a new model like this 2021 uh, Vespa GTS 300 HPE, or you have the prior generation, you know, pretty much 2019 and earlier, all the way back to the GT200 are all pretty similar. They just made some kind of big changes for this one. So let's get right to it and start taking the bodywork apart. So now that I have the handlebar covers, the mirrors, and the glove box all dismantled from this Vespa GTS, we'll be able to continue with dropping the fork. And for instance, if you're doing this job on a different Vespa, a modern Vespa I'm talking about, ET4, an LX, a uh, Primavera Sprint, pretty much you'll just do the exact same thing. Remove the handlebar plastics and the glove box. Uh, in order to continue moving forward with pulling the fork out of the scooter. I'm just doing it on the GTS because it's probably the most difficult uh, scooter to do it on. It's got an anti-lock braking system that adds extra complication and I'll cover that as well. So pretty much all modern Vespas have a disc brake system. In order to lose the least amount of fluid, whether you have an older model without ABS brakes or this modern model that's very critical not to get air in the system, you just don't want to have fluid leaking all over the place. I'll show you a little tip to block off the fluid from the, the front brake reservoir. So on Vespa GTS's, Primavera Sprints, they have a typically a sliding caliber. On the 50cc's and the LX, ET4, they have an opposing piston caliber. So you need to remove the caliper and spread the pistons. But on these sliding calipers, where they just have pistons on one side, you want to take the caliper and push it against the disc and see how it rocks around. I'm just pushing it as hard as I can to retract the pistons into the, the brake caliper um, casting. And what that does is displaces some fluid. Now we'll move up to your front brake lever, which is on the left side. And since we've displaced some fluid, you'll be able to pull this lever all the way to the grip and then put a zip tie around the lever. 
And the idea behind this, putting the lever to the grip, is it blocks off the bleed passage inside your master cylinder so it no longer will allow fluid to freely flow. So it's just, it will obviously drip some fluid when we dismantle the handlebars, but very, you know, you'll have less of it leak out and we'll have a lot more success in bleeding the system, getting whatever air out of the system when we reassemble it. So on these modern ABS equipped GTSs, we're gonna to need to remove the brake line that leads to the front fender or the brake caliper and also the speed sensor, which is this wire right here. Uh, if you're dealing with an older model, they'll have a mechanical speedometer cable that just leads up to the speedometer, kind of logically, and also a brake hose that just leads right up to the master cylinder. So you disconnect the hose right at the master cylinder. But these more complicated ABS equipped scooters, you're gonna to need to disconnect it from the ABS pump. And depending on what year your ABS uh, scooter is, uh, they may have a larger pump that has a fitting that looks like this for the front uh, brake. So just find the hose that leads to the front fender. Typically it will uh, loop up and go back down this channel of uh, hoses and cables right here. And I know for a fact it's this one right here and, and that rearmost uh, difficult banjo to disconnect. So, um, you may not be able to do this with a, a wrench. You may need to have a quarter inch socket to loosen that, that thing. I jammed some rags down there to catch any residual fluid that may drip out. So I'll take a quarter inch drive with a pretty small size ratchet and you get in there. This pump, usually they're rubber mounted so it does move a little bit. Get onto that banjo bolt and it may take a bit to crack and then go ahead and loosen the banjo bolt. And of course you're gonna have a small amount of brake fluid leak out. Um, it's gonna be kind of tight with your fingers in there and just go ahead and finish removing the, uh, the bolt from the brake hose. And you may put a little pressure on the brake hose to make it easier. I'm sorry, my hands are in the way here, but pretty much unscrewing this. You're gonna have a pair of crush washers. I'd highly recommend replacing those when we reassemble the, the scooter. And at this point, I've separated the, the hose from the ABS pump. And there's the banjo bolt with the crush washer. So we'll set that aside. So we'll go ahead and kind of unroute this hose from some of the, the clips. I'll pull it straight up. And you can see it's kind of bundled with many of the other hoses. Take extra care to make sure there's no drips coming out of this and going onto the bodywork because uh, brake fluid will attack um, paint. Uh, the next thing we need to disconnect is the speed sensor. Uh, it's right here located on top. And it, of course, depending on the model, only the, the modern, you know, 2015 and later have an electronic speed sensor, which is a great thing because the mechanical speedometer cable, that's something that usually fails. So uh, two pin connector, you got to push a tab, just like many of the handlebar connectors. Uh, the cable kind of loops through different various parts. We'll go through clips. So you can separate these clips usually with just a plastic uh, pry tool and just get the, the cable. I usually leave these clips open, so it reminds me that I gotta, you know, pretty much reconnect or route the, the wiring back through that. Another thing I like to do sometimes is I'll mark the cable with a, a yellow dot or a white dot tape. So I kind of indicate the, the areas where it may route through a certain area. So you route it all the same way. Pretty critical that you route all this stuff the way it was from the manufacturer. There's a lot of stuff going on in these, these scooters. And if you have the hoses uh, incorrectly routed, it, it sometimes causes problems and will cause um, you know, the, the cables to bind. They do have a single zip tie that's holding that, this hose here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip that zip tie. We're not gonna mess with the zip tie to the cables to the handlebars. And just pretty much, it's just, like I said, depending on your year, they've changed the routing of these cables and poses uh, based on the year and the type of handlebars. Obviously, if you have the Vespa GTV or Sage Journey, those are uh, much more complicated the way they have the, the pipes and hoses routed. Uh, it's gonna be the last hose right in this clip here. We're just pushing the hose right through. So 
So in order to remove the handlebars, you'll need an eight millimeter uh, Allen wrench of some sort, hex wrench. It could be a ball type like I'm using and a 17 millimeter combination wrench. Uh, typically, these aren't overly tight. Uh, the reason being is you, you can, they do have a small amount of slip on the fork stem, so you can make minor adjustments to the handlebars. So oftentimes if you crash a Vespa or lay it down or somebody tries to steal it, uh, the handlebar alignment may not be in line with the front uh, wheel. So there's a little bit of slip, just to show you right here. See that little bit of slip? The front wheel's not moving, but that's enough slip to make minor adjustments to the handlebar alignment. So go ahead and pull the nut. You're gonna have a special type of star washer that I highly recommend replacing. Uh, 012543, I think is the part number. This flat washer that you can reuse and also the nut. Same with this uh, Allen bolt here. We'll pull this out. And so the next step, go ahead and flop the handlebars down. So just pretty much wiggle them. Just pull them straight up. You don't want to twist them too much because there's a plastic uh, bearing protector. That's pretty easy to damage. And then just carefully flop them down. And it's safe to just have them hanging from the cables, uh, leaving this zip tie in place. Next, there's a bearing protector. Some of the older Vespas don't have this. Uh, keeps the grease and the bearings um, in good condition. There's also a tab that aligns it. So you got the special tool that does the four prong of uh, fork bearings. Uh, tool SN is the Scooter West part number for this tool. There's also a factory style tool. And the first nut you're gonna remove is a lock nut and then a washer right here. So we'll remove those two pieces and this should be fairly loose. The one that's actually clamping the bearings. Just a little bit of pressure on it. We'll leave it the way it is right now because next we're gonna to need to support the frame in order to drop the fork out. So we'll use a scissor jack to support the center section of the frame. Um, just pretty much lift it enough where we'll be able to um, have the front tire just off the ground. It's on the center stand. If you're unconfident on how stable the scooter is, I would highly recommend putting some tie downs around the rear grab handles of the scooter. And I just have the tire right off the, um, off this area. The next thing is this leaf will drop out on this uh, lift specifically. Not all lifts have this style set up. Uh, alternatively, you could strap the whole rear of the scooter and have the front overhang a table and you'd be, be able to, um, you know, have the front drop out, you know, but you need to carefully tie down the rear of the scooter. Um, these uh, lifts are pretty handy that they have this feature where they um, have a specific dropout. So quickly zip your wheel off. Six millimeter uh, Allen driver to remove the fasteners, eight millimeter fasteners. Keep, keep track of all the washers on there. So the next step is to support the fork and remove the upper bearing race and this may be best if to be done with two man you know two two people somebody holding the fork and keeping it centered as somebody's loosening the bearing but interest of doing the video i'll just do it he-man style so we got the race unthreaded from the top of the fork we know my brake hose and this speed sensor cable, or it could be a speedometer cable, are free and carefully routing out of the frame. So kind of make sure they don't snag. You don't want to pull, you know, pull this with the frame. And we'll get these out of the way. So you got the speed sensor out of there. And last but not least, the brake hose and just go ahead and carefully pull the fork out. And now you have the fork out. You can see it's got a, a lower bearing, also a grease you know, cup that keeps the, uh, the grease on the bearing. And this is a brand new scooter. Look how little grease is on those bearings. 
Uh, we certainly are going to pack them with a lot more grease so the bearings have a much longer life. So the easiest way to support the fork while you're changing the fender is just put it in a bench vise. Don't even necessarily need to clamp it down all the way, just enough to, to kind of stabilize it, keep it off the ground because it's kind of an awkward um, thing to hold. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you have the mechanical odometer cable that comes out of this hub, there would also be a clamp that holds the wire. Uh, the plastic boss is present on these newer scooters, but now it's all with an electronic cable that's uh, much more reliable. And just doing it in a new, new scooter. So first take off this little, little fender here. There should be a little flange nut right behind. Um, depending on the model, it might be a step bolt or it might have a, you know, this one, they have a little metal insert in there. That does come out. I'll just show it to you. With it On the newer fenders, they put this metal insert. It's a little more robust, but we'll go ahead and keep it all together because we're going to reuse this little, I just call it a little fork guard or a shock guard. Uh, we do sell these on our website, scooterwest.com. There's a Chrome version of this if you're interested or need to replace it. Also have the factory black one. Uh, this is just textured plastic. Uh, next, we'll remove the three fasteners on the fender. So typically, even on these new ones, it's going to be Phillips screws. Um, you can hold the nuts just with, with your hand there using a big number three Phillips screwdriver. And I'll just break them all free first. You have this wave washer, this long shoulder screw, and the flange nut on all three positions. So at this point, the fender's pretty loose. I can go ahead and route the plastic fender over the bearing and then pull your brake hose and speed sensor wire right through that hole there. So go ahead and support the fork, pull the fender off, and now you have the bare fork. Uh, this is the much newer fork. This is now a cast steel upper. It's much more rigid. I know these scooters, you know, the newer um, GTSs, they seem to ride better because they've rigidized this fork quite a bit. Just a little side note, but it's still the traditional Vespa fork design. Um, if you have, if you're changing this out on a scooter that has like 25,000 miles or more, or just got bearings that feel really bad and have a notch to it when you're steering, it'd be advisable to get rid of these bearings. So you have the bearing itself, the cage bearing, you have the race, and also this tin cup that you typically replace. We sell these uh, bearing kits as a complete lower and a complete upper. I think we also have the complete bearing kit. So if you're looking for any of these part numbers, I'll have them all in the description of this video so you can find them easily on scooterwest.com. But I can tell you one thing, we'll certainly put more grease on these bearings. So I got a new factory painted fender. I'm gonna replace this fender. Uh, you may be looking at why there's nothing wrong with it. Well, I see one thing wrong with it. If this was my scooter, I wouldn't be leaving these chrome reflectors on a note. So that's the reason we're actually changing this out. Uh, typically, you'd replace a fender because you probably likely uh, wreck the scooter, uh, have a crack in it, have a crack near the mounting bolts. Um, and the easiest way to get these is just buy them factory painted. Piaggio still stocks most of the colors for these fenders. Uh, typically, they all have the fender crest holes. So if you're using a new fender on an older scooter, such as a Vespa GT200 that didn't have this fender crest, uh, you're probably going to need to buy a fender crest um, to uh, fill up the holes that are uh, present on the newer fenders. So there's a pair of screws in these cups that retain the fender um, crest itself. It's a Note style one from a, a 2021 Note. It's got that hollow design on it. We'll reuse that. And then this little shock guard or fork guard thing, two screws. Remove it, they're very short screws, so make sure you reuse the correct screws. If you put long screws, you'll drive it right through the fender, which is not good. Remove the two screws, and we'll salvage the two clips that are in these two pockets right here. Um, if you really want to put reflectors on the scooter, um, I would recommend using your old fender as a template for where they drill the holes. You could certainly do that. 
and they got the press on clips. But the new fender, that's the whole idea. We don't really care about the reflectors. We're not gonna put those on. So set that out of the way. Take our brand new fender. And you wanna take extra caution in protecting this while you're uh, doing the job. And we'll use this bag, which comes in real handy for a couple, couple reasons. So we'll put the pair of clips. The little uh, threaded part goes towards the inside. And line this up. Go ahead and just install the screws while holding that little fender guard here. Get both of them in, in place. And no need to really over tighten these screws. They're just going into those little tin clips. Go ahead and place your fender guard back, or I'm um, at the fender crest, back into the holes that are already pre drilled into the fender. And drop these little cups on top of those pegs with the little screws that retain the. Uh, the fender crest. They've kind of been doing this style for quite a long time. Starting with the PX, I think, the Vespa PX, they did the same thing. One thing, all these modern Vespas, with the exception of the Vespa 946, they all have these plastic fenders. And they're quite resilient plastic. I mean, it's a good thing because the metal, you know, metal fenders on vintage Vespas are pretty hard to keep up. I mean, it's pretty classic having a metal fender, uh, but the plastic doesn't rust and uh, you can bump it into things, it's pretty flexible, which is a good thing. All right, so let's get this back onto our fork and get the fork installed back into the scooter. So drop the fender right over the, the fork tube. You got the brake hose that is kind of goes towards the front on this large opening right here. Then next you have the speed sensor wire that's kind of behind the hose. Make sure they don't get all twisted up when you're routing them through. And then carefully just, you could drop the, pretty much drop it in place. And you could support the, uh, the fork. I would probably, before I put it even in device, I'd probably get at least two of the screws in here just hand tight. And of course, if you have somebody to help you, you could, the job will go a little easier than trying to support the fork while you're um, threading a fastener in, but I'll manage. And you gotta be careful because when you're supporting it on the disc brake, the disc will kind of want to roll like a wheel. So it's uh, pretty easy to kind of lose hand of the, the fork. I kind of have it on this rubber mat underneath. So it makes it a little easier. All right. So now the fender's kind of stabilized and we're not going to snug these all the way at this point, just enough where they're seated. Now I've seen this job. I've I've actually sold customers fenders and then they just come back to the shop like, uh, yeah, decided I can't really do this. It's definitely, you know, you need to have something like a lift or some way to support the scooter at very minimum, put the scooter up on a table, you know, with the help of somebody else, hopefully get it up onto a table or a bench. I don't think you'll be able to do this just on the ground. Maybe if you put the scooter on side in the yard, you could probably do it. Probably not the best idea, but certainly could do the job like that. So get the screw in there. And no, no need to really have a wrench. None of these fasteners need to be, you know, they just need to be snugged enough to, to hold the nut in place. So this one, we'll go ahead and tighten down. And that's all we need to go. And you can just hand, you know, hold the, the nuts from the back. And do, do make sure you tighten these all the way. 
because it's, they're not very fun to tighten once uh, you have the fork back in the scooter. So one way to protect the fender before you put it back in the frame is you can take this big uh, bubble wrap bag that the fender was shipped in and cut a hole in it and you can drop it over kind of like a, a dress for the fender and drop the this right over the fender try not to get a bunch of grease on it go ahead and also route the brake hose and wire through this as well and you can leave this on all the way until you get the fender in to the scooter it's, it's useful because even if, if the if you got the fork bolted in, or the, even in, it, it may go past the steering stops when you don't have it in, and the first thing that will hit the frame is the fender. So, so there you go, you're protecting your fender. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and grease up that, uh, the bearing and get the fork back in. So if I was installing new bearings, I would typically use this Maxima water, waterproof grease. It's a lot thicker, it just happens to work better for these kind of bearings. But since I'm not going to clean the bearings of the old grease or the very little grease that's on there, we're going to use the same chemistry of grease. This is a lithium-based uh, grease. Uh, I, I don't know where I get it. ST80 high-performance grease. But it's the same compo composition. It's kind of that same white color. And we're going to put more grease on this bearing. And you just use your finger to pack it in there. Probably better if I had a glove on. I don't know if this is the best stuff to be touching. So just kind of fill the bearing up pretty good. You don't need to get too crazy. If you have a ton of grease in there, it's what I find on a hot day, it will um, go past this, um, the dust guard and may drip down the fender, kind of makes a mess. And then we'll do the same with the upper bearing. So the upper bearing is a similar but smaller version of what the lower bearing is, is a cage bearing. Make sure all the balls are still in place. Um, if it's missing some, that's probably just want to replace it or if you damaged it doesn't need much grease but we'll put a little bit more on there all right so make sure you have your bearing race ready to go I got the fork I'm supporting again two people this job would be a lot easier and take extra care and just direct the fork up the up the frame tube um, I'm kind of just supporting the the whole fork I'm gonna roughly route these uh, both cables, the hose and the speed sensor cable through. And I'm just kind of sighting where they need to go approximately through the horn cover here or the, the, the cavity in the... So get those out of the way, make sure the bag's out of the way, and just carefully lift the, the fork into place. And once the threads emerge at the top, I'm gonna take your uh, nut and go ahead and thread it by hand down the fork, so. And at this point, you got the fork in and we have the bag over the brand new fender to protect it. So at this point, the fork's in. Um, you either lift the fork, easily uh, thread this all the way down, but make sure the fender is pointed straight towards the front and not against the steering stops. Feels good, it's hitting both steering stops. We'll go up against the steering stop. And the way they do this by hand without the factory tool and a torque wrench, is just I usually tighten it pretty tight and then back it off. You'll feel the resistance get really easy. And then just come around and just a little finger tightness and that's it. You know, you don't want to have, you don't need to really necessarily tighten it down. I think technically it's only like four or five foot pounds if you can do the conversion but just a small amount, because if you have it this loose, the bearings will come loose, but right where it just starts to get tightened and you're just one finger pressure on this style wrench is all you need. Next, we'll go ahead and drop the lock washer. It has a tab on the front and then the lock nut. And this one, I think you could torque it to 25 foot pounds, but with the hand wrench, just fairly tight. 
and you can go against the steering stops, make sure the frame is well supported. And 25 foot pounds is just using the palm of your hands. And it's very smooth. The, the motion feels really smooth. There's no binding. I can feel a little bit of the binding of the cables, but we'll get the cables all routed and um, be in business. So take your plastic uh, pretty much as a dust shield, keeps the grease protected, drop it down onto the fork. On the rear section is this little plastic tang and it, and it engages with a tang that's sometimes found on the handlebars. This handlebar doesn't have it, uh, but we'll go ahead and put the handlebars back in place. You know, pay attention to how things are routed because if they're routed in a different, different way than they originally were, that could be a problem. Uh, the fender is turned to the left at the moment, so we'll kind of put the handlebars to the left and just drop it in, in place for right now. So, so put the bolt through. You, know, you may need to do a little bit of jiggling to get, get the bolt through the slot. Put your flat washer, put a brand new 012543 uh, locking washer. And then see the nut, you can see the side that's already been on the lock, you know, against the lock washer in the past. And go ahead and just for now, we'll just hand thread the nut on. So our speed sensor cable is routed up. And first of all, it goes through this little clamp here and kind of behind this original cable, this wiring harness cable here. Go ahead and close the clamp. And then it plugs into the main wiring harness. I'm gonna make sure you hear a snap. It is keyed, so it only goes one direction. And then it just clips on top of this um, thing here. So check the sweep, make sure it's not binding or doing anything weird. And they had the slack of the cable through this upper zip tie right here behind the ignition switch. So. Go ahead and route that back through there. And of course my hands are in the way and everything's black, so it's a little hard to see it. Not the best example, but cables out of the way. And there we have it. So the brake hose is a little more difficult to route. So it kind of is the rearmost hose, you know, with all these cables and hoses, pretty much your throttle cables, uh, the other brake hoses. So you kind of want to route it up through this. It makes a straight shot from the fender through all this stuff. So right up through there, um, you're going to need to get it past all these other cables. It is possible you just got to scooch them over, you know, kind of muscle them, muscle them around. And even the, these metal things, they do bend a little bit so you can get the cable past uh, If needed, you could bend this a little bit. And get it past and then bend it right back. So right here was a zip tie that I cut. So you're gonna to need to replace the zip tie. And the only thing this uh, zip tie does is it just goes around the front brake hose and around the steering stem. So. Kind of just route it just like the original. Make sure you don't get in the way of the, the locking mechanism for the, the steering. And before you tighten it all the way down, you're gonna see that there's some movement of this brake hose. So kind of just probably right in the middles, you know, where the handlebars are in the middle, and go ahead and tighten that. And that's, that's pretty good right there. And we'll go ahead and route the cable behind all these cables and back into the ABS pump. So the brake banjo has a pair of uh, one-time use crush washers. Part number on these crush washers is 127927. So you have a new set and just one goes on the top and then you got the banjo bolt itself, and then one goes in between the banjo bolt and the ABS pump. So the tricky part is getting the cable, the hose, 
positioned directly over that port on the ABS pump and starting the thread, the banjo bolt back into the pump. So I'm kind of holding the hose with my index finger on my left hand and with my right hand I'm carefully threading the banjo bolt back into the pump as far as I can go before I need to get the wrench. So at this point it's all the way tight. Go ahead and get the ratchet on there and you want to snug this uh, fitting tight and it's a little difficult because the pump does move quite a bit and you got to use a pretty small close quarters ratchet. See the whole pump moves because it's rubber mounted. Pretty critical that that's pretty tight. You don't want to have a brake fluid leakage. And now the brake hose is all back in in position there. So before we go any further, we're going to go ahead and bleed the brakes. Um, I'm going to get the bag out of the way. Uh, kind of did its job to protect the fender. Obviously, you don't want to scratch the fender cutting the bag off. So for an ABS braking system, I'd highly recommend having a power bleeder. This is a vacuum bleeder. Put an eight millimeter um, wrench on the banjo bolt. Or not the banjo bolt, this is a bleed screw here. And we'll go ahead and put the bleeder on there. Leave that port open for right now. Still have the zip tie on the, um, on the uh, lever up here. And take a number two Phillips, carefully take the reservoir cover off. And it's okay that the handlebars are turned to the left here because the bubbles for the brake fluid, they, they actually come up back up the master cylinder. If you have it tipped the other way, it's hard to get all the bubbles out of the master cylinder. This is the front master cylinder on the right side. Carefully pry the cap off. Level's pretty high already. Um, have some rags ready to go if you do have any drips. And we'll go ahead and carefully cut the zip tie. You know, and allow the uh, lever to retract. And carefully drop the lever. Give it a couple pumps. So now we'll turn the vacuum on on the power bleeder and have fresh uh, dot four brake fluid handy and ready to go. So go ahead and build a vacuum and you can pump the, the brakes through. Watch for little bubbles coming up through the master cylinder, replenish the the master cylinder, not to allow it to go dry. Give it a couple little uh, taps that will get bubbles out, just like little taps like that. And if you want to stop the flow, just pull the lever right to the uh, the grip, you know, with the vacuum bleeder on it. You don't want to do that if you don't have a vacuum bleeder. But and you can do a couple pumps. The quickly you get the fluid through, it pushes any bubbles through that pump, the ABS pump. And at this point, I'm going to hold the lever, keep the vacuum going. I'm going to go ahead and tighten the, uh, the bleed screw. I'm going to hold the handlebar straight and see if our brake system will build up good pressure. So right now, see the lever is very, very tight, and that's exactly the way you want it. Very critical and sometimes can be very difficult to bleed an ABS brake system. Um, if you have a you know, uh, non-ABS system, it's a lot easier. Um, sometimes if you have a lot of air in the system, you may need to do an electronic uh, brake bleed, which is a special program that runs for the, um, the brake cylinder. Since it's got new brakes, I'm gonna fill the master cylinder all the way up. But the vacuum bleeder did its job. So now that we've successfully bled the front brake system, go ahead and put the wheel back on. all your washers in the correct order and in good condition and always always start these by hand
And once they're started by hand, if you're looking to speed things up, this is where you can use an impact. And not for the final torque, it's just a, just wait until it just gives it one tap. And then we'll have a torque wrench at hand. So set it to 16 foot pounds, whether it's a clicky type. So at this point, the handlebars are still loose and you can see there's a little bit of wobble in there. Uh, that's no problem. Go ahead and tighten the, the pinch bolt and you can start with the ratchet, then do the final amount of torquing with the wrench. You know, sometimes you can get a rough, you know, just sighting the tire to the handlebars or just approximately right in the middle, kind of just eyeball it. About there is approximately centered. We'll take it on a test ride and that's how you, you'll do a final adjustment to the steering. And I think this is torqued to like 35 foot pounds. It's pretty tight, but not overly tight because the reason being is you can make adjustments to the steering. Say if you need to go to the left, you can give it a bang. You know, you know it just slips just ever so slightly. I could go a little tighter than this. You want it where you could just give it an adjustment, you know, but without it being loose. So if you have two or three hours of your life after watching this 30 minute video, uh, the change your own fender, that's pretty much what it takes. I can do it probably under two if I didn't have a camera on me. Um, it's definitely not the easiest job, but look at that. Brought back those clean European lines without these um, chrome reflectors that kind of don't really fit the style of the scooter, the Vespa Note in all black finish. I uh, hope you found that interesting. Again, remember, this video will help you whether you're doing this job on a, any modern Vespa. Even the vintage Vespas is pretty much the same thing. The vintage Vespas are the same way you drop the fork to change out the fender. So I ho hope you found that interesting. Hopefully it wasn't too boring a video. Again, if you're looking on how to dismantle the glove box or handlebar covers, I have so many past videos of all the different models on removing the bodywork. You can check those videos out. If you just stumbled across this uh, video for the first time, Maybe consider subscribing to the channel, helps us out. Uh, hit the like button, kind of always ranks the video a little higher. Probably have more modern Vespa videos than anybody else on the YouTube as of 2020. I didn't really try, it just kind of happened that way. Uh, until next time, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California.